Hello everyone, I'm Janneke and welcome back to Books and Stitches. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Magical Readathon, which is hosted by G over on Book Roast. She's been hosting this readathon for years now, but this year is the first year it's like a whole original thing. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail on the explanation because, I mean, G does an amazing job at that, so I'm just going to link her original announcement video below if you haven't seen it yet absolutely check it out i'm so amazed by everything she always manages to do it's so impressive and i'm very excited to join in again so i'm gonna be telling you about my tbr for the readathon so the first part of the readathon the spring equinox i think it's pronounced um is taking place in april which is very soon <laughs> um and i'm very excited to join it as you can see i already have a pile of books ready to show you uh, part of the readathon is that you are a student at a magical school taking different courses and you have different callings that you can try to achieve. Uh, callings are basically careers that you can work towards. I had a couple of careers I was really interested in, but I also already had a character from a previous readathon by G, by, from the magical readathon. And while I didn't totally remember everything I imagined about my character i did have her as someone who wanted to help but was also very paranoid about other people she was scared of others she had like this bad past i didn't like detail out what was what had happened in about that past but she was very wary of other people but she also um wanted to help people she wanted to like believe in the best in everyone so it was like a big contradiction within her and um, she both she had a lot of like mind magic, I guess. She um, she got sorted into the guild of the mind walkers. So there were two different callings that I thought would be perfect for the character I'd created. The first of which was the dream walker, which is an, a calling exclusive to the mind walker guild. But you have to read a lot of books for the dream walker, so. While I am going to be trying to get the Dreamwalker, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get that. So the other calling that called to me a lot was the Rogue Illusionist, which has a lot fewer books, and I was able to manage a TBR where all the books I had to read for the Illusionist calling could also fit into my Dreamwalker TBR. So I'm gonna try for the Dreamwalker, but. If I don't manage the Dreamwalker, I should still manage the Illusionist Rogue because I'll have included the books I would want to read for that in my Dreamwalker TBR, if that makes sense. I hope it will. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go through the requirements of the Dreamwalker and just like mention like, oh, and this is a book I could also use for Illusionist Rogue for this prompt in stats. I'm sure it'll make sense while I do it. <laughs> I hope so, at least. Um, so yeah, for the Dream Walker calling, you have to finish seven courses in the Spring Equinox readathon, and I will mention what those are, <laughs> of course. Um, the first course you would have to finish is Astronomy, which for Astronomy, let me open it up. Um, for Astronomy, the course you would follow is Basics asteroids and comets for which you have to read a book that is on the top of your tbr list which sounds easy enough just a book you really really want to read basically so for that i am gonna be reading good girl bad blood this is the sequel to a good girl's guide to murder by holly jackson um a good girl's guide to murder is uh, basically a detective thriller young adult novel and it is one of the few first thrillers I read that were YA, oh, no, not just that Y were YA, just in general. <laughs> I I have not read much in the thriller or detective worlds other than when I was a little kid and they were like kids books. So um, I recently got into reading thrillers and detective novels and um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was one of the first I had gotten into. It features, it features Pip who, um, is trying to solve the mystery of a murder that happened in her small town a couple of years ago because she does not believe 
the police got the right culprits. Uh, that's the mystery within the first book. I'm not gonna tell how it ended, obviously, because why that's what the whole point of mysteries right that you don't know how it's gonna end until you read it so i'm not gonna talk too much about the synopsis of this book because i don't want to give any spoilers for the first book but this basically continues to follow pip story and honestly i don't know much more about it anyway but i'm very very interested in reading it and i'm very excited what's going to happen next because i don't know if you can see it but there's like blood drips on the cover on like the earbuds on the cover and i'm already so I want to know what happens. I want to start this book and just finish it and continue Pip's story because I really loved A Good Girl's Guy's Murder. So that's the book I'm going to be reading for Astronomy, the book at itself for my TBR because I just really, really want to get to this. The next course you would have to do for um, a Dreamwalker is Alchemy, which the course you take for Alchemy or what you learn for Alchemy is the Potion of Infatuation which simply has the prompt, a book featuring romance, which again, for me, is quite a simple prompt because most of the books I read are contemporary or romance novels. And even if it's not like a romance novels, most contemporary novels have romance in them. So this shouldn't be too difficult. And I have decided to read The Princess and the... Oh, <laughs> The Princess and the Fangirl for this. I always really love books that are taking place in like Hollywood in actors' careers. And this is a book about an actress who is like at a comic con and she wants to like, I think she wants to break out of like the character she is and like grow a career beyond that. That's at least what I got from the synopsis, but I'm very excited to read it. It's also based on The Princess and the Pauper. I think the original story might actually be the prince and the pauper, not princess, but I know it from Barbie, in which it's definitely the princess and the pauper. And I really loved all loved that Barbie movie as a kid so much. I'm excited about that as well. So um, yeah, it's basically an actress and a fan of the show who happens to look a lot alike, switching places. So I'm very excited about that. Um, it is part of the Once Upon a Con series, but I read online that they were like standalones, they're like companion novels, not like a true sequel. So I think I should still be able to really love and enjoy this, even though I haven't read the first book in the series. I hope so, at least. If not, then I will probably put it back in my bookcase, pick another book with romance and just buy and read Geekerella before I read this. But I think I should be fine and I'm very excited to read this. So this is the book I'm going to be reading for Alchemy, namely a book with romance in it. Okay, so the next book, or no, not the next book, the next class you have to complete to be a dreamwalker is also a class you have to complete to be an illusionist rogue. So that's very nice. So if I do, I'm going to focus on this book as one of the first I'm reading. And then if I don't manage to do, read all seven of the dreamwalker books, I should still have finished the illusionist rogue books starting with this book. So the class you have to take is Art of Illusion for which you take the class Mirror Image. And for that, you just have to read a book with a trope, a book. <laughs> you just have to read a book with a trope you love. For that, I have picked One of Us is Lying. As you see, I have already started this book. I'm going to cheat the readathon a little bit because of university and just health reasons. I will definitely not be able to read like completely new books. I have very limited time to read and I will not be able to finish this book before a full starts basically and i do really want to finish it so i'm just going to cheat a bit and count books i've already started because i have barely had time to read at all in march and february for anything that wasn't university related so yeah i'm gonna cheat a little bit and count this book so this book is one of us is lying and it is also a murder mystery just like um good girl bad blood uh it's about five teenagers who go into detention and at the end of the detention, one of them is dead. And throughout the book, you read the perspective of the four other teenagers in detention and like are trying to figure out who is the one who killed him. And like, according to all of their point of views, they're like innocent. But as the title suggests, one of them is lying. So I'm, yeah, I'm very curious about it. I have already started it, um, but I don't really know much yet. I know like, that the guy who died 
had like secrets on everyone so that's like they all had motive to kill him in a way because of that but i don't know anything yet really so i'm very excited to find out who is guilty uh, and for the trope that i love that i chose this book for is um as you might be able to see it started with a geek a jock a criminal a princess like the breakfast club and i in general really love stories that like brings different stereotypes together and like forces them together and to interact so like the breakfast club trope i don't know if that's like an official trope but i see, see it in a lot of like stories and books and i really enjoy it so i'm kind of counting that as a trope that i love so yeah one of us is lying for the art of illusion for a trope that i love for both the illusionist rogue and the dream walker hopefully for the dream walker but if not i can count it for the illusionist rogue and still manage a calling hopefully because it's more than just the one book but it's a good start for it um the next course that you have to do for the dreamwalker is spells and incantations for spells and incantations you're gonna learn the anti-gravity spell and you have to read a collection of short stories or essays or i think just one short story or essay is fine as well i'm gonna try to read a collection and not just one um and i'm gonna it's a big book <laughs> try to read a treasury of classic fairy tales in the land of story series by chris colfer um the land of stories is a children's series by chris colfer about two kids who find out that their dad is from the from the fairy tale world and they basically have adventures in the fairy tale world uh, the land of stories uh, i mean the treasury is not technically like a part of the main series it is um a separate companion with a bunch of fairy tales in it basically as well as some behind the scenes extra bits of the main series but it's mostly like a collection of fairy tales and i really love fairy tales in general and i love everything i've read of the land of stories so far so this is gonna be what i'm gonna try to read for this short stories and essays because i'm just gonna be reading some fairy tales that sounds fun right so yeah i can just like i don't know how many there are total but i'm gonna try to maybe just read one a day or so and then get through it like that because i don't think fairy tales is something i would enjoy just reading in a row i think i would like to split them up so i'm just going to be reading one of these every so often but that is the book for spells and incantations a collection of short stories and then the next book we will have to read or the next class we'll have to take for both dreamwalker and illusionist again is uh, psychonics and divination the prompt for which is to read a book that is set in the future i had a lot of trouble with this prompt because i don't read science fiction i barely read fantasy i was really struggling with figuring out a book that i owned that could count for being set in the future but then i remembered that i had the book one last stop by casey mcquiston which is a romance novel but if i remember correctly um it takes place in a tube station and it includes someone from the past who's traveled to well the now but for them it will be the future so i'm gonna count that because of that so it's i mean it's time travel it's someone from the past coming to what to them is the future even though for us it is now so i'm gonna count that as a book that is set in the future because for one of the main characters it is so i don't really know much more about the book to be honest i mainly just picked it up because i really loved casey mcquiston's previous novel red white and royal blue um i really love that romance novel so i wanted to give her other novel a shot as well because yeah i just loved the first one so i probably love more of the books they write right so yeah i don't know much about this but i'm very excited to give it a try and it's gonna count for being set in the future which is another one that would tick off both for Dreamwalker and Illusionist Rogue. Again, hopefully for Dreamwalker, but if not, I can fall back on becoming an Illusionist Rogue instead. Because Illusionist Rogue is only three books, and two of them I've already told you about. One of them we'll get to soon, I'm sure. Uh, the next class we would have to take for becoming a Dreamwalker is Conjuration. For Conjuration, you would take The Conjuring of Light. 
And for that, we have to read a book with a source of light on the cover. For that, I have chosen um, An Author's Odyssey by Chris Culver in the Land of Story series. This is the fifth book in the Land of Story series, which I already told you a bit about before because of the treasury. Uh, I really enjoy reading those bo these books, but I'm very slow in getting through them. So I do want to, I've already started, as you can see, but then I like stopped and started reading one of his is lying and stuff. Uh, but I really want to finish it. I really love the books. I just, I'm very bad at reading them for some reason. Like I always love them while I'm reading them and I'm just really bad at picking them up. So it takes me forever to get through them. But it has multiple sources of light, though they're all quite small. There is a uh, lightning here. There is um, a lantern here. She is holding something that gives light. So yeah, I'm not going to tell you too much about what it's about because it would spoil the four previous books in the series. But the book, the main book, the not the main book, but the first book is about two kids who find out that they're that. It's about two kids who find out that they're that who has died recently um, is a part of the fairy tale world and they travel into the fairy tale world and they try to find a way back home. Um, that's the first book. I'm at the fifth book now, so I'm not going to tell you too much about it because I don't want to spoil it. But I really love these books. So I'm very excited to finish this one. And yeah, it has multiple sources of light. However, it will also count or not also, but if I don't manage to become a dreamwalker, this will be the last book I read to become a Rogueolutionist instead. Um, the last course you have to take for Rogueolutionist is shapeshifting, for which you have to read a book with claws on the cover. And I am not like into biology, so I'm not sure what counts as claws, but I this looks like claws to me, so I'm going to count it. This creature here has like claw-like things. I think those are claws. So I'm gonna count that for its instead. Or like if I don't manage to become a dream walker, I will count this book as shapeshifter instead and become a, an illusionist rogue. So yeah, if I end up becoming an illusionist rogue, I will be reading these three books instead of all seven that I want to read in April to become a dream walker. So then there's one more course we have to take to become a dream walker. And the, the last course is shapeshifting. No, not shapeshifting. Uh, it is lore. The last course you have to read to become a dream walker is lore, for which you have to read a book that is mythology inspired. So for that, I have chosen Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepard. This is a YA, I think it's a contemporary, it might be a romance. There's definitely fantasy elements, so who knows how you classify it. I'm not the best with genre classifications, but it takes place in the nowadays world with the main character. Um, I don't know what her name is. It's Helen. It's Helen. Helen um, is moving in with her. I think it was her father and her siblings. Yeah. Who happen to be Greek gods. So it's definitely mythology inspired because it's about dem a demigods and Greek gods. And yeah, it kind of gave me Percy Jackson vibe though, vibes just because of the demigods, Greek gods thing. But I think it's going to be a completely like different genre and age group. It's not going to be like an adventure. It's, I think it's more going to be like a f funny romance, like a rom-com. But um, I'm very excited to read it. It sounds fun. Yeah, I don't really know too much about what it's about, but I'm like really into mythology. So I think I will enjoy it no matter what. So that is the last book. Hopefully I will be reading all seven of these books and become a dream walker. But if I manage to not do that, hopefully I will read at least these three books and become a revolutionist. I'm so excited to start this read a -fum. If you are also joining the read a -fum, please let me know what calling you've decided to follow, which books you're trying to read. I am so excited to just hear everyone else's plans for April and for the readathon. I love this readathon so much. This is the first readathon I've ever joined. Like it was a couple of years ago with the magical readathon back then. It was the first readathon I'd ever joined and I just love it so much. So yeah, please let me know what books you're planning to read if you're joining it. And also, if you've read any of the books that I just showed you, 
let me know what you thought of them. Try to keep it spoiler free because like I haven't read them yet, but let me know your thoughts on them. Did you enjoy them? Should I which one should I prioritize because they're just so great? <laughs> um yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will probably vlog the experience but i'll definitely do like a wrap up if i don't like i'll let you know what i managed to do and my thoughts on all these books thank you so much for watching bye